How has this pandemic impacted deal making IPOs in China? I'm assuming many have been delayed with roadshows canceled. Yeah, I think uh, uh, the uh, so far the China. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. We can hear you. Can you hear us? Yes. So a little bit of comment on the overall economy and the market. The IMF just published their uh, forecast yesterday. You know, ours is not too far off, but it seems like the 2021 forecast seems to be a, a bit too optimistic. Uh, China is very fortunate to be the first out of wood, uh, but the impact is still very uh, significant. As it is a double whammy, you know, both demand and supply side are hit, unlike some of the uh, recent uh, crisis we've been through. So far, the Chinese capital markets have shown remarkable resilience, uh, partly because it's not as bubblicious as the U.S. market, you know, uh, but earnings will not be pretty. ITO market will be extremely difficult due to investor sentiments, but also pure logistics. I think it's very hard to do an IPO, you know, uh, over Zoom. Um, on the MA front, I, I think surprisingly, there are a lot of interests. Uh, people do see this as an uh, opportunity for bottom fishing. If the, if the price is in a persist, we expect the company with healthy fundamentals and strong balance sheet to use the window to extend and further break your on the pack. And fun, in addition to those logistical challenges, there's been this wave of allegations of corporate malpractice at companies like Luckin and Tall Education. What does this mean for investor appetite for these U.S. listed Chinese companies? And does it temporarily put a freeze on these types of IPOs? I'm not close to the situation, so I can't really comment on company specifics. But in general, it's the last thing we need at the moment. It will certainly shake investor confidence and makes it harder for Chinese companies to seek IPOs in the U.S. Uh, it, we may see a new wave of going private deals, you know, for ADR companies. The logic is very simple. The bad ones don't want to be caught, and the good ones don't want to be with the bad ones. In terms of some of these global banks that were burned, you have the likes of Morgan Stanley and, and Credit Suisse. What did they miss? Were there warning signs that they just didn't catch? Look, I mean, I, I'm not really close to the situation. I really comment on the uh, the, uh, the specifics and, and then, uh, how it appears doing that. But I, I think, it, in general, with the retail companies, uh, uh, the uh, the banks and the, uh, the, the the auditors, and in general, will have to exercise a lot more, you know, uh, 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 caution and conducting a lot more robust you know, due diligence process. Fan, it's Richard Hong Kong. I want to get a sense in a broader sort of way about this crisis. With every crisis, there is an opportunity. What opportunity do you see from this? I think the crisis, in a way, accelerated China's online economy. Uh, when you're stuck at home for not one month, but three months or more, certain changes of behavior become a permanent. Um, I think a lot more Chinese rely on online shopping these days for their, for their daily needs. Uh, but also, I, I would emphasize only the e-commerce company with the robust logistic capabilities and a, a strong supply chain, uh, we emerge as big winners. Uh, we uh, have spotted that certain sectors actually are becoming the beneficiary of the uh, crisis in a way. Uh, health, health insurance, online education, collaborative soft, software, SOFs, these are uh, companies actually, uh, of sectors actually benefit uh, in a way from the situation. But on the other hand, we also see the crisis uh, accelerate the digital transformation of offline economy as well. The offline retailers have no choice no, to but move I'm online. Very... Hello? Well, absolutely. I'm going to talk to you. What about those offline retailers? And but that also, you know, is in tandem with what's going on with, with technology and the tech side of things here as well, where most people suggest that's the future, really, and a future which is now being accelerated largely down to this pandemic. Yeah, I'll give you two examples. Like, these, are, these are companies we invested in. For example, a cosmetic shop, right? Uh, um, obviously, the shops are closed down, and, and they, they, they start asking their duty advisors to go online to sell you know, products to the customers, and they achieve uh, with uh, a certain measure of success. And the uh, uh, the supermarkets now are all moving online now. 
the, uh, for example, I'll give you, uh, the elders um, traditionally would like to walk into the supermarkets and buy groceries. Now they, 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 they started learning to use a smartphone because only a smartphone can be get green codes, and only with the green codes they can move around. Once they, they, they learned how to use smartphones, they started learning to, uh, to, to make their you know, grocery shopping online. So these are some of the examples of how, you know, even the offline, offline you know, companies are forced to move online as a result of the, uh, the crisis. 